competition doesn't matter as soon as you land after the last flight. It's all over and it's ancient history. So it's, I, what I like to say is it's the doing and not the having done that matters. A silky body lies crumpled in a fallow field. A cold corpse waiting patiently for the warm breath of life. Misty fields, morning sun, and the splash of color against the gray of dawn. A hot air balloon is the ultimate symbol of freedom from the drudgeries of the world. Balloonists like Bruce Comstock know the thrill of floating free. At the time I first, first saw a balloon, all I knew about sport hot air balloons was that I'd read an article in the newspaper, but I'd never seen one, I'd never seen a picture of one. And here it was, and it was, it was uh, 500 feet away probably. I hopped in the car, followed it, and you know, it just was something that completely captivated my uh, imagination. Good morning, Cameron Balloons. But for Bruce, ballooning turned out to be much more than recreation. Now it's his business. He and his wife, Tucker, own the only Cameron balloon manufacturing factory in North America. It was quite a switch from programming computers to making balloons, but Bruce has done very well. Since we began manufacturing, our, the rate of growth of our sales has been between 40 and 44 percent per year. When we decided to start manufacturing, we started out in the basement of our home, did all the certification there, then moved into a converted pig barn that belonged to some friends of ours, and then leased the building we're in now, which we're on the verge of moving out of to go into the factory that's being built. I find both the business and flying really enjoyable. Of course, they're very different things. The problem I have right now is that the business is taking so much of my time, I find very little time to fly. But Bruce does make time for national and international competitions. This past July, he took a week to compete in the seventh world hot air balloon championship. A hundred of the best balloonists from 23 countries gathered in Battle Creek, Michigan to compete for the title of world champion, a title that Bruce himself captured in 1981. And the surface are expecting winds to be approximately from 210. The pilots are being briefed on their next to last task in the competition. They are just now learning where the target is located. The task will be to choose a launch area that will allow them to fly over the target. Now, with maps in hand, the 100 aeronauts and crews have just over an hour to drive out to the country, choose their launch site, inflate the balloons, and begin their assault on the target. It is 6.25 p.m. At 7.25, with only 20 minutes left to get off the ground, the frantic search to find the ideal launch spot has ended. Bruce and another former world champion, David Schaefer, pull their trucks into an overgrown field. The crew, including Bruce's wife and their 13-year-old daughter, Courtney, begin stretching out the silks and getting the craft ready to fly. Having a good ground crew really means a lot, especially when we're out in the country looking for a launch site. I was at a Continental Championship in Canada a year ago, uh, and we were literally on the highway in the truck in a traffic jam five minutes before the end of the launch period, and we drove into a wide sort of, not ditch, but... Uh, area of grass on the side of the road and from the time I said we're going from there to the time I was standing in the basket ready to lift off is three and a half minutes and that's crew really <laughs> beating the deadline by just minutes Bruce is in the air an hour later the orange yellow green and red balloon nicknamed watermelon is on the ground only six markers were closer than his to the target. Well, I feel a heck of a lot better than I felt <laughs> on any of the other flights this week because I've been doing just sort of what I consider to be a mediocre job. I rarely am as low as 18th place in the overall standings in any championship. I finished in the top six in the four world championships I've flown in. As I say, I can't count to 18. <laughs> I, I told my wife and daughter this morning that it was time for me to make my move. <laughs> so this is the beginning of it, and I'll do the rest in the morning. It's 45 degrees already. 42. It's the final day of competition. The target area has been moved to a different location, and once again, the pilots are searching for what they consider to be the perfect site. You go around the country and you put little balloons up, and each one goes a different direction from the one before. And then you stand, you scratch your head for a long time. I guess I take it too seriously. 
I want to be in the exact right place. Finally, a decision is made, but the landowner can't be found to give permission to launch from his property. Bruce settles for a backyard a thousand feet down the road. I'm a real competitor deep down, and I enjoy the process of competition. The thrill of winning a championship isn't quite as great now as it was five or ten years ago for me, but the thrill of doing well is. See, I have this strange belief that what happened in the competition doesn't matter as soon as you land after the last flight. It's all over, and it's ancient history. So it's the, I, what I like to say is it's the doing and not the having done that matters. Winning more things doesn't mean much to me, but, but the actual doing, the actual going out and competing, I really enjoy. And if I happen to win, that's great. You know, I'll, I'll just put the trophy on the mantle next to the others, and <laughs> it'll collect dust just like the rest of them are. <laughs> Bruce's finish in the world competition was his worst ever. He was 21st. But he flew in the U.S. Nationals three weeks later and walked away with a runner-up trophy. Mm -hmm.